Hi and welcome to Happy Bending. I'm Bill and today I'll be sharing with you my top five bending tips. So let's do it. Happy Bending. I wrote them out for you. Let's start with number five, start small. So if you're starting in vending, don't get sucked into one of these healthy vending biz ops that you have to put out $50,000 and you get all these cheap machines that aren't gonna last. And then when you find out that people don't uh, wanna buy healthy snacks, you're stuck with all this equipment that maybe you're only gonna get pennies on the dollars for your investment and you, you're gonna lose your shirt. So my suggestion is look on Craigslist, look on Marketplace, get yourself a couple used machines, American used machines like a Dixie Narco 501E stack machine or a Royal 669 stack machine and just start with a couple locations. Put cans in the machine because they have a longer shelf life, they're less expensive. Try to find an account like a car wash or a, a small factory or you know maybe just a, a car lot. Some places where you can just try it out, get used to servicing the machine, get used to doing basic repairs and decide whether vending is the right thing for you. And as you gain experience, you can look for better accounts and maybe try to buy some newer machines, but start small. Number four, avoid import machines or American-based companies that use mostly imported machines or imported parts like Sega. Uh, the problem with these machines is they're not very durable. They have terrible customer support it's hard to get parts for them. Uh, when you do find parts, they're usually expensive. And uh, it's just going to cost you in the long run. The machines will become very unreliable. They'll be breaking down and you're gonna wish you never got them. There's a lot of American manufactured vending machines here in the United States and they're the companies you should stick with. Stick with Royal, stick with Crane, which uh, owns Dixie Narco and Automatic Products, uh, USI, Vendo. They make more durable machines, um, more reliable machines, and it's easy to get parts for them. I have several Royal machines. I've never um, not been able to get a part direct from the manufacturer. I call the manufacturer. The parts are fairly inexpensive. They uh, ship them quickly. Same thing with uh, my Dixie Narco machines, calling a Crane Direct. I've never not been able to get a part from them and they have been um, very reasonably priced. And there's also technicians there that will uh, help you find the part number if you don't know the part number or work you, walk you through any technical problems you have. So stick with American made machines, whether you're getting them used or you're um, buying new machines. Number three, make your machines look good. I had purchased all used machines. I never got a, um, a new machine. And most of the machines I, I purchased were around $500. So there was little problems with them. Every single one of my machines, I had to get the lights working. But that's all part of it. You want your machines to be attractive. Don't leave a machine with the lights burned out. It's not appealing. People think it doesn't work. It just looks a lot better with the lights working. And usually what I have done is I've just converted them to LED lights because they last a lot longer and they use elect uh, less electricity. Also, a lot of times when machines were, were kept outside, the, the clear plastic on the front of the machines, like the cover, the flavor strips will start to yellow or the buttons start to yellow replace them. They're very inexpensive parts. If there's a trim piece on the front broken, replace that. Faded decals, replace them. Uh, they're not expensive. They're easily available, especially with your popular machines like your uh, G3 machines from Royal or your 
your 501Es or your 276Es from Dixie Narco. The parts are available either from the manufacturer or vending supply companies. So replace all those trim parts. And another thing, don't put homemade uh, flavor strips in the machine where you just write root beer with like a pen or something. It's not very attractive and that that type of uh, machine will not do as well with sales as one that looks professional, lit up, looks new. So yeah, make your machines look nice and also keep them filled. Uh, keep them stocked. Even um, if you're only putting a, a couple products, if it's a snack machine, a couple products in, in each spot, it, it just looks more attractive to see a stock machine. Tip number two, put credit card readers on your better accounts. Uh, there's a couple reasons for this. First of all, it gives your customers another option to pay with. They can pay with credit card or the new ones can do uh, touchless pay like Apple Pay or Google Pay. So they have that extra option. But also, which is very important, it gives you sales data uh, without going to the location. You can use the app and go on and see whether the machine needs products and what products it needs. So you can keep tabs on your machines without having to drive out to the accounts. And you'll know, well, I can skip that account this week because it, it still has a, a lot of product in it. Also, you get a lot of um, information that would tell you maybe the cabinet temperature is too warm or, oh wow, this machine hasn't sold uh, this, this column for a long time. It might be a jam in the machine. So it gives you other data that you would, you would need to know to go out to service the machine. If um, an account isn't doing well enough to justify a credit card reader, maybe uh, you want to start looking for a better ac account to put that machine into so that you can put the credit card reader on it and, uh, and do better with that, with that machine. So how much is it going to cost for a credit card reader? Whether you use NIAX or USA Technologies, it's going to cost you about $8 a month per reader because it uses um, like a cell phone account in it and you need to pay monthly for that. Plus you pay about 8% per sale to the credit card company. But you can recoup a lot of that by doing two tier pricing, which means um, you give people a discount if they pay in cash. You put a sign on the machine, well if you pay in cash you get, let's say, a 10 cent per item discount. And then if they're paying by credit, they end up paying a little bit more and that helps defray your costs. But like I said, it's worth it just for the data that you get on the app by having the credit card reader. And finally, vending tip number one, network with other vendors. And the best way to do that is to join the Vend Discuss Forum, which is on the internet, and I left a link down below. This is a free forum to join, and there's dozens of experienced vendors on there that are willing to answer any questions that you have free of cost. It's free. Uh, information and valuable information if you have a problem with a machine or you want some advice on what type of machine to get or what type of credit card reader to get there are people that will walk you through it and it was a, a real asset to me when I got into vending because I didn't do any training I'm, I'm not I wasn't really experienced in vending. I didn't work underneath anybody to help me. So whenever I came across a problem, I would post on the Venn Discuss forum and people gave me a lot of good advice. And even to this day, I've never come across a problem on a machine that I haven't been able to service myself. And a lot of that is uh, thanks to the Venn Discuss forum. So yes, number one, network with other vendors. If you like this type of video, make sure you hit that like button and uh, subscribe and maybe I'll make more videos like this in the future. And as always, happy vending.